This is No One From Nowhere, and you are, and I am, a Spirit of God. Today I want to talk to you about the first Sumerian city, Ark of the Covenant, Anunnaki All-Seeing Eye, Temple, and possible the first oldest cult of Saturn. First a joke, what was the longest day in the Bible? The day Adam was created because there was no Eve. 2 Samuel 6, 5 through 6. Ahio walked in front of the Ark of the Covenant. David and all the people of Israel were celebrating before the Lord Ninurta, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments, guitars, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nacon, the oxen stumbled and Uzzah reached out his hand and steadied the Ark of the God. Then the Lord Ninurta's anger was aroused against Uzzah and God struck him dead because of this. So Uzzah died right there beside the Ark of God or the Anunnaki Elohim. He simply touched the Ark and was zapped out of existence. This is very mysterious. And another very mysterious city, matter of fact, the world's oldest city in Mesopotamia, another Anunnaki city, where the Anunnaki had an evil eye temple. This world's oldest city was found a few short years ago by a spy satellite and had buried over 20,000 eye symbols. Let's do a little review. In my opinion, this video may need endless amount of time of discussion. And in my opinion, from Abraham, we have three religions, and all three are worshiping or energizing the Saturn North Pole. On top, we have a six-sided hexagon shape. This is a picture of the Saturn's South Pole and possibly the all-seeing eye. From this, we may assume to entertain the eye of Horus, the eye of Ra, the eye of Providence on the dollar bill, to potentially Ninurta's eye or evil eye of Saturn. Saturn's worship was first done infamously by the Roman Catholics, known as Saturnalia. And Jesus Christ, in Mark 15, 34, called out to Helios, or Saturn, or Kronos, or Ninurta, or King Anu. Mecca, or Islam, worships the black 3D cube which is in turn a six-sided polygon or star of David, but really was adopted by initially Ninurta originally because all roads and texts lead to the Anunnaki gods. Jews worship the black cube as Saturday or Saturn Day is worshipped on their black Sabbath. And that is why exactly why judges wear black robes. Notice Ninurta having an electrifying weapon. All spiritual energy, no matter what, goes to King Anu, the Anunnaki gods, Ninurta. But through what, I ask? Notice in text above, David was playing music before the person was electrocuted. Is there some kind of omnipresent electrifying eye on earth via the Ark of the Covenant? Through Hertz, electrical energy waves controlling our hearts, through our pineal glands. A few Saturn companies. The eyes of CBS and not to mention Target. We may never know, but today's video touches on this subject. Telbrek, other name was Nagar and Newar was an ancient city in Syria. It remains constitute a tell, 
located in the upper Kaabar region near the modern village of Talbrek. The original city's name is unknown. During the second half of the third millennium BC, the city was known as Nagar and later on Newar. Starting as a small settlement in the seventh millennium BC, Talbrek evolved during the 4th millennium BC into one of the biggest cities in Upper Mesopotamia and interacted with the cultures of Southern Mesopotamia. The city never regained its former importance, remaining as a small settlement and abandoned at some points of its history until disappearing from records during the early Abbasid era. Different people inhabited the city, including the Hafafans, the Semonites, and the Harans. Talbrek was a religious center from its earliest periods, and the religion was the Anunnaki Sumerian religion. Its famous ice temple is unique in the Fertile Crescent, and its main deity, Belit Nagar, was revered in the entire Karabur region, making the city a pilgrimage site. The culture of Talbrek was defined by the different civilizations that inhabited it, and it was famous for its glyptic style equids and glass. The city was photographed by a U.S. spy satellite and spotted in 50-year-old imagery by Dartmouth College's anthropology professor Jesse Cassane. This prompted scholars to refer to Talbrek as the world's first city. And here could be the world's first resident. <laughs> Four mass graves dating to 3800 to 3600 BC were discovered in the submound Telemanyana, north of the main Tel, and they suggest that the process of urbanization was accompanied by internal social stress and an increase in the organization of warfare. About this time, the Anunnaki had a falling out and provided nuclear warfare, it should be noted. The first half of this period saw the erection of the Eye Temple, which was named for the thousands of small alabaster eye idols, figurines, discovered in it. There was over 20,000 found here. pretty important question would be why would they have over 20,000 of these eye idols buried here? Another very important part of this story is with the end of Uruk culture around 3000 BC, the Telbrex Eurocranian colony was abandoned and deliberately leveled by its occupants. Why would they deliberately level this site? The most important Akkadian building in the city is called the Palace of Nanarsin, which had parts of it built over the original Ai Temple. Despite its name, the palace is closer to a fortress. The findings in the Ai Temple indicate that Talbrek is among the earliest sites of organized religion in northern Mesopotamia. It is unknown to which deity the Ai Temple was dedicated, and the Ai figurines appear to be votive offerings to that unknown deity. Today's video next part will be about maybe uncovering this mystery. In addition to the divine blackbird, the God's terrible eye, the great beam that subdues the world to its power, and the world controller whose sound could reverberate all over were installed in the sacred precinct. Finally, when the structure was complete, the emblem of Utu was raised upon it, facing toward the rising place of Utu, toward the space part of Sipur. All these beaming objects were important to the spacecraft's and spaceport's operation for Utu itself. Came forth joyfully to inspect the installations when completed. Early Sumerian depictions frequently show massive structures built in earliest times of needs or reeds and wood standing in fields among grazing cattle. The current assumption 
was that these were stables for cattle is contradicted by the pillars that are invariably shown protruding from the roofs of such structures. The pillar's purpose, as one can see, was to support one or more pair of rings whose function is unstated. But although these structures were erected in the fields, one must question whether they were built to shelter cattle. The Sumerian pictographs depict the word dur or tur, meaning adobe or gathering place, by drawings and undoubtedly represent the same structures shown on the cylinder seals. But they make clear that the main function of the, of the structure was not the huts, but the antenna tower. Similar pillars with rings were po posted at temple entrances within the sacred precincts of the gods, and not only out in the countryside. Question, were these objects antennas attached to broadcasting equipment? Were the pairs of rings radar emitters? placed in the fields to guide the incoming shuttlecraft. Were the eye-like pillars scanning devices the all-seeing eyes of the gods, of which many texts have spoken? We know that the equipment to which these various devices were connected was portable, for some Sumerian seals depict box-like divine objects being transported by boat or mounted on pack animals which carried the objects farther inland once the boats had docked. Does this derive from Saturn's black cube? Because these black boxes, when we see what they look like, bring to the mind of the Ark of the Covenant built by Moses under God's instructions. The chest was to be made of wood overlaid with gold both inside and outside. Two electricity conducting surfaces were insulated by the wood between them. The implication that the Ark of the Covenant was principally a communications box, electrically operated, is enhanced by the instructions concerning its portability. It was to be carried by means of wooden staffs passed through four golden rings. No one was to touch the chest proper, and when one Israelite did touch it, he was killed instantly, as if by a charge of high-voltage electricity. Such apparent supernatural equipment, which made it possible to communicate with a deity through the deity, was physically somewhere else, because objects of veneration, sacred cult symbols, temples at Lagash, Ur, Mary, and other ancient sites, including among their devotional objects, I idols. The most outstanding example was found at the I temple at Talbrek in northwestern Mesopotamia. And they these people had over 20,000 I idols. The 4th millennium BC temple was so named not only because hundreds and thousands of I symbols were on earth there but mainly because the temple's inner sanctum had only one altar on which a huge stone or double eye symbol was displayed. Is this the Ark of the Covenant? In all probability, it was probably a simulation of the actual divine object or the Saturn South Pole or Ninurta's terrible eye or the one at Enlil's, Enlil's Mish Control Center at Nippur, about which the ancient scribe reported his raised eye scans the land his raised beam searches the land it also should be noted that the sumerians called the ziggurats the supreme or most high and indeed these structures were it also meant heat source in akkadian and fire in hebrew John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, or Logos, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, or before creation. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Peace and love to you, because you are 
and I am a Spirit of God.